welcome to Suncoast. This video is about the uh, fortified church in the village of Hermann, Romania. The church is located approximately seven and a half miles, which is about 12 kilometers, northeast of Brasov in Romania. Brasov, of course, is the larger city or the large city in the area. Um, it was a famous medieval city. And I was told that it was, during medieval times, it was as famous as Toledo. And Brasov controlled much of the region for most of its history. Hermann is closer to Brasov and not far away from Prezmer. Um, and of course, Prezmer is the more famous fortified church in the area. And both can be easily visited the same day, and I recommend that highly. The churches in Prezmer and Hermann share a very similar defensive purpose and history. And Prezmer is the more fortified church. It was lying further east and closer to the path of the Cuman invaders for which it was built and later the Ottoman Turks. They were coming through the Buzo Pass from the south. And Prezmer was a lot more fortified than, than Hermann. And of course Prezmer was a much larger village than Hermann. You could see that in the amount of rooms um, in the fortified church. In Prezmer you could see about 270 rooms which belonged to the villagers who took refuge there during sieges and attacks. In Hermann there are far fewer rooms and they're more like little houses really. Uh, uh, they built a little differently too on the inside of the fortified walls. As I mentioned in the uh, Prezmer video, there are 150 fortified churches in Romania and only seven of them are under conservatorship and are designated UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Hermann is not one of them. The name of Hermann in German is Honingberg which literally means honey mountain which is mons mellus in latin there is a story that says that during medieval times honey was a currency of exchange that was very important and Hermann was producing a lot of honey and that appears to be the origin of the word mont mellus A little bit about the uh, history of Hermann. Just like the church at Prezmer, this church was founded by the Teutonic Order, who was invited by the Hungarian king, who controlled that portion of uh, Europe, to, to help defend the, uh, the area from attacks from the Cumans, a Turkic group uh, nomadic that was invading the area and they were coming from the east and they were going through the Buzo Pass and attacking the Bursa country which is the uh, the area that Hermann is located along with Prezmer and a few other fortresses that were built around that time. So the Teutons were, um, were brought in to help defend this area and that was uh, in 1211 then they started building these fortified churches and uh, fortifications but very soon they uh, they got pretty powerful and uh, the king feared their rise to power and pushed them out of the area in 1225 so the fortifications were not finished and the king looked west to find someone that could finish these fortifications and he made a deal basically with the Cistercian Catholic Order which came from Dijon, France and they were expanding in all throughout Europe. They were uh, uh, Benedictines and uh, following um, Saint Bernard. They basically were the ones that finished these churches and fortifications. 
but they didn't stay there long either and I'm not sure exactly why they were pushed away but I, uh, I, I suspect that they were also gaining power and the king didn't like that very much so he gave the uh, fortifications in both Prejmer and Hermann to the local Saxon community. Brasov was the big city in the area and it was also controlled by uh, local Saxons and so uh, they had a lot of power in, in this area. The Hermann fortification has at its center the uh, church which is built in Romanesque style. It's smaller than the uh, church at Prejmer, which is built like a Greek cross, and it's a lot more majestic. But the Hermann church is taller, and it has, uh, it really is a, a beautiful design to it. It's a, it's a more uh, architecturally pleasing style than uh, what I found at Prejmer, which is built more like a fortress and uh, very Gothic. So at the center, you have the church, which is positioned with the main entrance uh, to the east side and the back is facing west towards the chapel tower. The entry is in the south section. It's uh, through a, uh, an archway uh, that is defended by the gate tower, which was the most fortified of the towers because it was protecting the gate. Around the six towers, and the walls was a moat. The access to the castle was through a angled drawbridge, which was over the moat. And like in Prejmer, there was a portcullis, which could be lowered. And the archway itself was protected by multiple doors. In the gate tower, there's still the old bell that was built in 1608. Inside the courtyard inside the walls there is a well that could serve the community during siege times. Also on the south side on the inside of the walls is the living and storage places for the villagers while they were under siege. There's also a um, classroom and a few other interesting rooms that can be visited. Generally, if you find a, a door that's open in, um, in Hermann at the site, um, it means that uh, you can go in and visit the place. You can also visit the uh, bell tower, which is kind of interesting. It's a bit of a difficult uh, trip to go up there because you have to go up on, the, on very steep uh, stairwells and stairs. Well, they're not stairs, it's ladders, really, um, and they're uh, some of them made of massive wood and uh, they're very steep and kind of difficult to climb but it's a very satisfying experience uh, one thing which uh, which was kind of strange for me was as i was climbing up to the top the bell started ringing and that happens every 15 minutes from what i understand so uh, you can easily get startled when the bells start ringing and if you're close to them they're pretty loud but it's a very satisfying experience and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's nice to be up there and be able to look outside and, uh, and see how the whole structure was built. You can also see the uh, clock mechanism. A few more uh, historical facts about the fortress church um, is that um, it's reported that it went through five plague epidemics, four periods of uh, flooding, two major fires, and they were uh, under siege for an entire month in 1612 when the Transylvanian prince Gabriel Bathory attacked. And uh, they were able to withstand the attack much better than Prejmer, which gave up after about seven days for lack of water. The church is quite beautiful, and as I said earlier, it's uh, made in a Romanesque style. 
The floor of the church is wood planks, whereas in Prejmer I've noticed that the floors were tiled. The altar was completed in 1787 in a Baroque style, and in the mid 18th century, a small organ was consigned to a new gallery on the west wall that was probably built around the same time, according to the documentation that I was given. The pulpit was completed late 18th century and suspended, uh, and suspended at the northeast corner of the nave. The existing organ, which is quite beautiful, was built in the last years of the 19th century, so it's, uh, it's more recent. The bells are in operation and uh, are from 1923 and 1925. In the church you could see uh, Persian carpets of different sizes uh, hanging from the wall and over banisters. Um, and that's testimony to the trade that the Saxons and Hermann were uh, engaged in with outside traders. Another uh, interesting piece of information that I read someplace is that the church still has an organ that was donated by King Carol the Twelve of Sweden in 1740 and which was completely restored. The bell tower was added in the 1300s. It has a height of 56 meters, which is about 183 feet, the highest in the Bursa region. Initially it had five bells, but during the First World War the bells were melted down for the war effort. The bells in operation are from 1923 and 1925. I had a fun experience climbing to the uh, top of the tower and uh, a bit of a challenge. The first area that you need to climb is these uh, stone, uh, stone spiral staircase that allows only one person at a time. It's a very narrow uh, staircase, which brings you to the first landing, then a stairwell that has a, a few steps, brings you to the next landing. and then a steep ladder that takes you to the floor where the clock mechanism is located and that's a very interesting thing to see it's a pretty intricate and old mechanism and from there a another uh, ladder that's made of tree trunks that are well worn out and that brings you to the next level and finally there's one more set of uh, steps on a ladder that bring you to the bell tower A fascinating place 
at the uh, Herman site is the chapel tower. It was built at the beginning of the 14th century and was expanded to a fortified tower. The fascinating thing is the, are the paintings on the walls, which are interpretations of the Old and New Testament. They're well preserved by and large and are really amazing to look at and to imagine the people that occupy their room over the centuries and the purpose of the room. It would seem to me that during battle, during sieges, that was a place to come and worship and gather strength for the next battle that was taking place and to pray. And probably that was the main purpose of the chapel. I'm guessing, but I believe that to be true. Many of the rooms are open and can be visited. And amongst them you will see rooms that were used for uh, living quarters, which were probably the majority of the rooms. But some of the rooms were used for special purposes, such as storing various items, including fruits and vegetables. And also uh, there is a classroom, which, uh, which is very uh, well preserved. And in fact, it kind of struck me, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed that experience because they have a speaker on the wall and you could hear a child's voice speaking in German. Um, probably, I, I don't know German, but uh, it probably is a lesson or something that, uh, um, you know, a classroom session of sorts where the child is speaking and the narrating the lesson or and reading from a book or reading from a book. At any rate, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice experience. There is also a museum that's adjacent to the uh, area where you purchase the ticket to, uh, to visit the place. And they have various uh, maps and drawings that are available for sale. And you can view various items that were used by the villagers back in the day. The wall dates back to the uh, early 13th century and is oval. The fortification of the church was increased in the mid-15th century in response to the Ottoman Turks' attacks. The churchyard wall was strengthened and built up to 10 to 12 meters high, which is roughly between 32 to 39 feet high. All towers are connected to the guards walkway and narrow staircases and ladders. The guards walkway gives access to the various holes in the wall through which the uh, defenders could launch projectiles and could pour hot oil, pitch, hot water onto the attackers down below.
While I was making this video, there was a young couple that was uh, taking pictures for their uh, wedding at the church at Hermann. And I, uh, I asked them if I could take some pictures and uh, if, uh, if I could post them on the internet. They were very gracious and they allowed me to do so. And I thought I would just put those up because it sort of adds life to the place and uh, it's living history. The place, the story of the place continues with these young people that uh, want to be associated with, uh, with the church and with the history of the place. In the 16th century, very much like the Presmer Church, the Hermann Church became Lutheran. Thank you for watching the video, and if you liked it, please subscribe.